Hello guys and welcome to Not David Zamolara. In today's video I'm gonna talk about the Nissan Rogue misfiring issues, some of the things that I have already done so far unsuccessfully, but no don't turn off your uh, video because we will get to basically we're gonna get to the bottom of it. Um, So I've actually watched some other YouTube videos based on this problem after I have actually done mine and I already done all of those things that are recommended to do in the other YouTube videos. Not because I watched them first and then did mine, it was it, because it was like common sense for me to do it. And now because it was unsuccessful I wanted to kind of compare notes and to see what other people are experiencing with their YouTube uh, channels. I will be doing some more, you know, uh, some more, I guess, reviewing of other channels, like what, you know, somebody else is talking about this, because uh, there, this is a four-cylinder uh, Nissan Rogue, and there's a bunch of Nissans out there with the same type of engine, which is four-cylinder, very common in Ultimas and every other vehicle. So I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of information on this particular thing. But here's what I always, basically, I see, the, the, the norm, okay? It is the obvious thing. Okay, it's the spark plugs, and it's the spark plug boots. Uh, it is the ignition coils to the spark plugs. Uh, it is actually oil making its way into the spark plug boot. Uh, so those kind of things. So that uh, seems like very common. And then you have things like wire and harness issues where some of the electrical stuff is, you know, doesn't make it where it's supposed to be uh, because uh, due to corrosion or some other things. I've seen that, okay? But there's other things that people are not talking about. Like they're not talking about like how, um, like for instance, uh, these Nissans, they're going to have uh, a, an engine misfire just because the catalytic converters go bad or bad O2 sensors or they're going to have a bad uh, mass airflow sensor. So these are the kind of things that I want to cover on this channel. Not only that, I want to dive deep and I want to actually uh, show you guys what's going on when some of those uh, components are either malfunctioning or not plugged in or what happens when they're changed or what happens when they actually go bad so that we could actually test these things out. So anyways, I want to explain to you guys in this video what I've started with in um, my series of uh, Rogue videos and then you, you're going to see them. They're going to be edited a little bit different. They're going to be like less talking, more like hands on and then me actually doing the work and showing you exactly what tools you need so you could perform uh, those, you know, that work yourself. Um, of course, to many of you guys, you don't know me, maybe. Uh, you probably think this is some new YouTube channel. Uh, I've been around on YouTube uh, almost for years now. It's like, gosh, how time flies. I have a channel called Simulata How To Show, and uh, I have t-shirts with my logo on it. I have a microphone clipped in that, you know, so it's just messing up, I think, so you can see my microphone right there. But um, anyways, I have plenty of experience in the uh, YouTube world, and um, I really enjoy helping people solve their issues. I am not concerned with making money on this kind of stuff. Uh, I don't care. The main thing is that I want to help is for people to figure out their own problems, uh, to fix your vehicle on a budget. Uh, so if you're like willing and uh, able to just uh, get your hands dirty and, uh, you know, with some, armed with, with some uh, useful information from YouTube, kind of like from my channel, uh, and just go and uh, try to fix your vehicle. So, so be it, you know, uh, God bless you. And, you know, I hope uh, you'll be able to fix your vehicle. And this is kind of like where I come in. I'm a car guy and I've been messing with cars uh, since I was 12 years old, guys, believe it or not, I bought my first car at 12 years old for $50. It was like 1987 uh, Mercury. I don't know what it was uh, actual the other name, but it, it's um, Mustang uh, Fox body. That's the type of uh, style it was. It was a V8 uh, type of vehicle. We're not going to get into that, but I've owned many cars. Uh, Many of them Japanese, many of them Audis and Volkswagens, and now I own Mercedes and Mercedes diesels and stuff. So my channel is a Maletta How To Show and Unboxing uh, does cover the topic of the Mercedes diesels. So um, naturally, I have other cars. Uh, I have a total of 12 cars, uh, different type of issues. So I didn't want to confuse anybody because uh, with a sprinter type of world, uh, there's not a lot of people that have helpful information. And my channel is one of those uh, that I'm being told it's the only one that actually helps people. So if that's the case, that's the case. That was the whole goal uh, is to help people solve their issues. So this particular channel covers the, you know, any other type of car that you might have problems with. Um, 
I have actually a lot of Nissans, I have Infinities, um, and this is why I'm kind of thinking, you know what, I'm going to start with those cars on this channel and try to solve some of those issues, uh, and we're going to cover many, many different topics. So I'm, I'm trying to get this channel off the, you know, off to a good start and uh, showing you guys hands-on stuff. Hopefully I have learned from my mistakes on my other channel, you know, like when you start out brand new, you don't know what you're doing. And uh, hopefully I could uh, be on point and actually help you guys be insightful. But all of my videos, uh, you know, I've been told they're ba basically, they're very inform informative. And uh, my approach is like this. I'm definitely not speaking for the mechanic. That's maybe if you're a mechanic and you're in a shop, I'm not speaking to you. Um, you know, I'm not trying to discourage you from watching my videos. Uh, but what I mean by that is you're already a professional. You don't need this information from me. But the common type of people that have common issues with their vehicle, and unfortunately these days, uh, with all the bills and everything that everything else that we have, we just can't afford sometimes to take our vehicle to the mechanic. So we we are left with no choice but to figure it out ourselves and uh, try to hunt for the problem down. And this is where I come in because I want to show you how to fix it for twenty cents if possible, or show it to you how to fix it for free if possible. So that's what I do. So I give many advice for the common type of guy out there or girl that wants to work on her own car and upkeep it and stuff like that. So we will actually grow this kind of content, uh, you know, going forward. So please subscribe to this channel. I will not ask you guys to subscribe in every one of my videos. I forget to ask this. I am focused on, on the matter at hand and trying to actually handle it and trying to provide the information that I'm not like thinking about asking people to you know hit likes or subscribe so if you watch this video please subscribe because i'm probably not going to mention it uh in future videos you know if i will then i means i've remembered but uh i normally don't even think about that um that being said we will be uh putting out videos on this channel uh at first uh, several times a week uh, like I've been doing uh, and then it's going to be speeding up, speeding up and then it's just going to be videos every day, hopefully, uh, but we're going to have to build up to that because I'm still running my main channel, no matter how to show and that is kind of mixed. It's got all kinds of stuff. It's basically my life channel as well, like, you know, that kind of stuff. So this channel is just going to be like pretty much car channel, like focusing on cars. That's it. Cars, car repair, car help, car questions, you know, car solutions. Okay. That being said, let's get back to, uh, yeah, that's the introduction. By the way, my name is Serge. Uh, it is not Dave. However, you could call me Dave if you want. I don't care. Uh, but the way I say my name, which is Zimalera How To Show, welcome to another day with Zimalera How To, you know, with Zimalera. Basically, it sounds like I'm saying, like, welcome to another day with Dave Zimalera, you know. So I've been told that many times. But anyways, uh, Zimalera means, uh, it's my brand. Uh, it means winter and summer because I do this year round. As you can see, there's a little sun. It's uh, being deformed right now. There's a little sun and there's a little snowflake uh, because I do this from winter to summer, summer to winter. So basically like that. So it means winter to summer. But uh, anyways, that being said, uh, hopefully this is out of the way. Um, I like to brand things, you know, Zimaletta, obviously, because uh, there's nobody else out there with this name. Uh, if they are, then that means they're copying me or it might be just my own channel. Uh, the way I do, the reason I do this is because uh, obviously branding is important. Uh, you know, it needs to be recognized, kind of like Google, YouTube, Facebook, everybody else, like Amazon. You know, where did all those names came from, right? You have to start somewhere. So, if you search Zimalata, you can see I'm pretty active uh, in the social media type of uh, realm. I'm always answering questions. I'm always helping people, and that's actually what I enjoy to do. That's what I want to do for the rest of my life. Uh, so. <laughs> that being said, this channel is here to stay. There's going to be many videos. So right now, I'm not making money uh, off these videos, and I'm not asking for any donation. But if you feel that you want to support this channel, you're going to be highly welcome to do that because I completely live off my YouTube channel on my property. I have a pretty big property here, and I own it. So um, I am living the dream. I'm not living the luxury life, but I am living the dream of tinkering uh, with cars and doing car projects uh, that I always wish to do. It is not as a business. Uh, I'm not doing it for the money. I'm just doing it for a learning experience for me and to share my experience with you guys. So a lot of the stuff that I do, I try to think how things are work because I am very interested to know how things work. Not because I want to start a big business and uh, repair money, you know, cars for, for money, but I'm actually trying to keep you out of those uh, 
shops that will uh, charge you high amounts of money. Not that I don't want shops to make money because uh, they are with a lot of overhead, but uh, the common person that uh, has a car in a normal type of job, chances are you can't really afford to take your car to get serviced uh, by a mechanic. And you're trying to see if you could maybe fix it with some uh, <laughs> some uh, duct tape and maybe some rubber bands, uh, put a bandaid on it, I'm your guy. Uh, most likely I will help you to do that, <laughs> you know, because I fixed my sprinters uh, pennies on a dollar. Uh, that's why I was able to uh, achieve what I have achieved in my life just through simple saving and fixing stuff myself. So if you haven't uh, learned anything from this video, just the introduction, then uh, you could learn one thing. Just because you do it yourself, you, you could end up saving a lot of money. Uh, therefore, having a better future because you'll have more of those dollars to put them where they do count. Okay, so that being said, uh, let me just tell you just a quick little quick little introduction of what's going on with my wife's, um, you know, Nissan Rogue. I will be probably speaking in my other videos about it as well, but uh, I do want to say that it just recently started misfiring. Um, I'm, hit, I'm getting a, a PO300 code, multiple cylinder misfire. Then we're getting a PO301, um, which is a means that 301 means a one, means cylinder one. Uh, 304 means cylinder four. Uh, I am getting those, okay? So my uh, thing was, okay, like why is this going on? Uh, immediately, you know, I understand spark is very important chances are spark plug has a worn out because you need to replace them every 80 to 100,000 miles the logical place to look at spark plugs that is a very cheap repair fortunately i have a spare nissan rogue i'm able to go and, and pull any part that i want and um, test that on the nissan rogue that i do have and say hey this worked or this didn't instead of buying a brand new part installing it Let's say I would be uh, at a mechanics shop and they're like, hey, you know, we think this is a catalytic converter. It's going to cost you a thousand bucks. Do you want us to do it? We think it's going to fix the problem. And you're like, is it going to fix it? Well, we think, blah, blah, blah. Let's do it. We recommend it. So you're going to go and you're going to say, okay, fine. You know, I got to get this car done, you know, over with. So they're going to install it. And you're like, yeah, that, that, that didn't fix it. Now, now we're thinking it's the O2 sensor, you know. So you're like, well, is that going to fix it? Yeah, we recommend you replace two of them because they're still, you know, and they're going to go back and forth and replace that, replace your spark plug, replace uh, all the ignition coils. Plus, then they're going to replace uh, the ignition coil, you know, boots. Uh, costing you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. And I don't want that to happen to you. That's why I'm going to be testing out different things in mind and saying, hey, I did this. It helped. No or it didn't help. I am not interested in looking uh, on my channel like, wow, I know exactly like what I'm doing. I fixed it and because I could make it look like that through through uh, the magic of editing, I could make everything look good, but I'm not gonna do that. Uh, my whole purpose is uh, to say, hey, this really helped or this really did not help. You know, I could care less if you think I'm a good mechanic or not. Uh, most important thing is to learn how to diagnose the vehicle properly. Like you don't want to just uh diag well like not diagnose something and just keep throwing parts at it however i will be in my case because if i cannot uh you know find any other solution in my head then yes the most logical solution would be throw the parts at it that i do have in my other vehicle you probably don't have that so i don't recommend you throwing parts at it at the dealer because it's going to be very 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 costly things could add up very quickly um that being said i have a friend with a mercedes sprinter van just a check engine light no misfire is nothing could not pass inspection, takes his vehicle to the Mercedes. Before you know it, they tell him different things that's are wrong. Uh, $7,000 later, they're like, you got to pay us. Check engine light is still on. They negotiated to 5,000, he gets a sprinter back. So, you know, that's a quick story for you. That's what happens. And you might be wondering like, well, you shouldn't be paying for it if they uh, did not find a solution. I agree with you 100%. But the way the mechanics work is they're like doctors practicing you know if they did the work they're going to charge you for the work and they're going to charge you for the part you know unfortunately they're not going to eat the part or the, you know their own time so otherwise they're going to go out of business very quickly because it's really expensive to be a mechanic um that's why they charge a lot of money you know so um it's like doctors that keep having to raise their knowledge skills because every single year new technology new information you got to take courses 
there's a lot of investment that goes into it. It is one thing if you have an honest mechanic that will honestly tell you what it is. Believe me, there are many dishonest mechanics, unfortunately, because they want to charge you for every little thing leading up to the actual thing that needs to be fixed so that they could optimize how much money they make. And if you're at the mechanic to begin with, how will you know that you just wasn't ripped off? You can't really know that um, unless you're going to ask for all the parts back and then you do your own diagnostics. And then in that case, well, why didn't you fix it yourself to begin with? Why were you at the mechanic? So if you have that kind of knowledge. So unfortunately, people don't have that kind of knowledge that do take it to the mechanic. They don't have the time to really look. They just want somebody else to take care of it while they're doing what they're doing best. Uh, and that's their work or their business. And unfortunately, people get taken advantage. Um, and I'm not saying that to be mean to mechanics or to say that every mechanic is dishonest. I'm just saying that, hey, if you could afford, if you could avoid going to the mechanic, why not? Uh, you know, please avoid it. Okay, um, let's continue. So with my misfire cylinder one and the cylinder four, what it's telling me is possibly spark plugs, or ignition coils or ignition you know boots so i replaced first uh one spark plug because immediately when i op when i actually removed the ignition coil i've noticed there's oil and you're gonna see that in the video there was oil in there like right on top of the spark plug which is actually really new to me i've never seen that before in my life but unfortunately i have seen it on other videos so actually right after mine because that was actually surprising i went and i looked that problem up somebody else had oil and it was actually cylinder one same thing was mine cylinder one full of oil so a uh, common issue i guess uh just a gasket that's leaking uh, on the valve cover you know uh not a dead, deadly situation i wouldn't really worry about it unless it's like a really really bad leak um now we've been having like slight misfires for a while my wife mainly drives it so you know she does not really notice these things i notice them right away any kind of jerkiness shakiness i notice it i listen for it um and uh you know i tend to uh jump and fix it but i was always uh traveling long distance and i didn't have access to her car because i'm on the road and she tells me sometimes different stuff but when i come back it does not do that so uh but today uh after i replaced the spark plug spark plug boot spark plug um you know ignition coil i replaced that one i cleaned up all the oil you know put a good ngk plug in there I'm thinking, okay, covered everything, good. Went, took it out for a test drive. Just uh, down the street, about a couple miles, I ended up making a U-turn, and I, when I parked, my engine shut off, and it would not uh, let me start it back up again. That was kind of scary, because, not for me, because imagine if you're taking that car somewhere else, because that's a long highway. As long as I was doing consistent highway speed, chances are it would kind of like maintain the, the momentum it would not die until you stop at a stoplight guys it would start up and die start up and die start up and die start up and die that's what it was doing so i did i did a few things and i i made a video i had a head mounted type of gopro uh i got it started but i got it home at 30 miles an hour it was like <laughs> like it was just basically driving like a horse in a buggy it was really horrible now that problem's gone all of a sudden it is non-existent it does not do that anymore why I don't know why I'm still hunting for it so uh, knowing uh, that I probably should have replaced all the spark plug ignition coils and all the spark plugs and all the boots that's what I've done next I replaced all of them with the, the one that's uh, actually uh, with with one of the spare Nissan Rogues and I know that one is actually good it's got low miles it's only like 100,000 miles I know it sounds like it's a lot but it's low miles considering that other one's 204,000 so I replaced it with all those parts and I know that other Nissan Rogue it runs perfectly you know it's fine so I know those things don't misfire so I have installed all of these things and guess what the problem's still there it's it's kind of like the same uh you're experiencing some shake between 30 and 40 miles an hour uh at like 1500 to 1800 rpms um so unfortunately the problem is still there so the next uh, logical thing to replace was mass airflow sensor because uh mass airflow sensors what they do is when they go bad uh and you start your van up or van i've got i have these also you know when you start your car up it just makes it die immediately so you could unplug it and start it up like that it will start up and actually in my case i unplugged it and it did start i was able to maintain the idle i had to kind of like flood it a little bit so that was what was going on uh so it kind of solved uh the issue now 
I do think the problem is uh, not in the spark plugs itself or not even in the, uh, the ignition coils in my case. And uh, maybe in your case, that's the problem. And that's gonna be a really cheap solution. I actually think this might be uh, fuel injectors, uh, probably one and probably four that are actually, you know, doing a problem because these are the most common, uh, in, you know, uh, common codes that I get. Uh, multiple cylinders misfire and then one and four. Uh, before we get to the injectors part, um, I will be uh, installing fresh uh, O2 sensors and, um, We'll see where that leads. Now, sometimes with these Nissans, uh, if your catalytic converter is bad, it will also make it misfire. I don't know why, but it does that, uh, according to some information that I got. Um, but I do believe I'm leaning towards um, fuel injectors. But before I get to the fuel injectors, I do believe uh, I got to replace the cam sensor and I got to replace uh, the crankshaft sensor. Uh, also, I think uh, there's possibility of misfire due to uh, timing. It might be timing. I think I would have got some timing codes, but uh, it's, it's a possibility. It's not a definite. It's a, it's a possibility. Um, but I do think uh, even though crankshaft sensors are not popping up codes or cams, you know, I do think at least a cam sensor needs to be replaced. I do think. Uh, and uh, all two sensors definitely need to be replaced. Uh, and then I will see what's going on and I'm going to be making videos on each individual of those type of topics, including all the diagnostics that I do. Uh, I do hope that you uh, subscribe to my channel and it is going to be a little bit different uh, than some other channels. Uh, it's just going to be a little bit more insightful. That's it. So the videos might be a little bit longer, but hopefully you are getting valuable, valuable feedback. And uh, hopefully I'm eliminating you from doing exactly those same things because you will see how I done it. And if I didn't get any success out of it, then why would you try that, right? So uh, maybe a step that's going to be saving you some time. But um, anyways, guys, uh, just uh, right now, uh, pretty late. Uh, I'm just going to put it up over here on the screen. Uh, pretty late. I, um, I decided to unplug the O2 sensors just, just to see what it's going to do. Uh, it, it threw a code. Uh, I can't remember the actual code name, but it did throw a code. And um, after re after plugging everything up, the code actually went away, but it did not improve anything by me unplugging the O2 sensors. However, it should not actually improve anything. Um, <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, it should actually cost a code. <laughs> so it did what it's supposed to, but it was not like much worse. It's just basically through a code. Um, so I do think that next step, I just need to replace the uh, O2 sensors. And uh, at first, just kind of like, I'm just getting it out of there and uh, start it up with uh, O2 sensor being out and see what that's gonna do. And then actually, re you know, installing some new O2 sensors and uh, see what that's gonna do. So. There's definitely going to be some uh, learning going on uh, on this channel. Hope you guys join me and, uh, you know, we're going to figure out together. And uh, there is a lot of Nissans and Infinities, uh, so this is going to be a very common, uh, you know, issue. Uh, one other thing I will tell you guys, some upcoming things that I will be doing for this channel. I have a Nissan Murano and uh, I have an Infinity FX35. Now, both of those have a 3.5 liter uh, engine. I will be, um, well... My Infinity, uh, I believe the engine locked up due to it did have some timing codes. My wife was driving it and it locked up while she was driving. So that's pretty much, you know, I guess a goner, you know, for now. We're not going to be really rebuilding it uh, right now, but uh, I will be disassembling it and we're going to learn how those things work uh, on that engine. Um, and uh, I do want to say that uh, um, I, I'm, I'm going to be installing... Uh, basically the whole uh, engine from the Nissan Murano and uh, leaving it the way it is. So we'll see if that's actually going to work. So it should work. But uh, I'm going to actually see that because uh, if that works, then great. Uh, you could probably replace it with a Murano engine or another 3.5 from a, maybe like a Nissan Maxima. Uh, definitely uh, Infiniti uh, G35 engine would work. Uh, you know, that's actually what's in it right now. Somebody else installed a G35 engine and shortly later it failed too. Very strong engines, uh, but they don't have really good uh, timing chains on them. Uh, they tend to stretch. Uh, so not a good thing. But, uh, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that, you know, Murano engine in there and uh, 
you know, hopefully that provides uh, some solutions to somebody, you know, that that, that could be done. Uh, there's going to be actually a lot of projects I'm going to be working on Zimbalota Motors. Uh, for that channel, I have planned, um, uh, that channel has basically sprinter related videos. Uh, more and more, it's just going to be sprinter related videos on that channel. And um, the channel is going to take a, an interesting turn. Uh, I will still be teaching about uh, those uh, engine, diesel engines, but what we're going to start doing is we're going to start installing um, different engines from regular cars into those, uh, you know, sprinter vans, including doing all kinds of engine swaps and doing some crazy projects. So hopefully that's going to be really fun uh, for you, my audience. Uh, and this channel, I have actually another unique uh, little project that, that's coming up. Now, one of the rogues, one of them, I'm going to take and I'm going to uh, cut off the side of the of the vehicle where the doors go into. I don't know what that metal portion is called, but I'm going to basically drill it all out, get it out, do the same thing on the other Nissan Rogue and replace it with a Murano type of uh, type of system. Uh, and uh, the, the reason I'm doing it because I want to actually make a Murano front end, Murano doors. So that's going to be a really interesting project and probably put like Murano interior in it, you know, we'll see. So it's going to be like a Nissan Rogue front end. Nissan Rogue's, I mean, uh, uh, did I say? it's going to be Nissan Murano front end, uh, Nissan Rogue rear taillights, that little section, but the sides and the front is going to look completely Murano. So uh, pretty sure nobody ever done that, but that's kind of easy to do, but I think it's going to be a fun project um, <laughs> to do. So that's just something to expect from this channel. I'm going to be doing a lot of crazy projects because that's actually what I do. I'm just a YouTuber and uh, I'm a car guy. And one thing I enjoy uh, more than anything is just thinking about cars and uh, making videos. So, and talking to people and help you guys, you know, entertain you and hopefully help you uh, solve some of your issues. So in the process, I think we're going to both all of us we're gonna learn a lot but anyways guys thank you so much for watching take care of yourself and god bless you see you guys in my next video take care bye my name is serge zamaletta i'm 37 years old and yes i experienced success after buying my first home for cash back in 2011 i was broke but i learned to solve problems on my own now i'm helping others to solve their problems i know what pitfalls to avoid to stay profitable in business need motivation to be more successful in your life do you have Sprinter Expedite or business problems? Then subscribe. Let's find creative solutions to your problems. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of my helpful videos.